techniques you will use that depends on this particular scale of measurement. Suppose we are considering only this, uh, this, uh, this one that is the nominal data. So if you consider nominal data, nominal data, so nominal data or ordinal data that depends on three things. One is that ordering, no ordering is possible. What is your gender, male or female? You cannot order this one. What is the distance between male and female? No distance is also there. And from where we, we define this one as a male or female or rural or urban, you practice yoga or not, what is your nationality, India or Bangladesh, you cannot find the unique origin on the basis of which that can be defined. This type of data is known as the nominal data. And sometimes it may be a text data also. So if time permits, I'll show you how to handle the text data. Next one is that there is a first, here you consider no ordering is possible. If you come to this one, under ordinal data, only ordering is possible. That is what you prefer most, banana or apple. You can rank this one. I prefer apples over banana or banana over apples like this one. But if you want to find the distance between preference of banana and apples, no distance are there. And finally, from where you can define, that is, this is basically banana or apples, uh, that is, in terms of preference, no unique origin are also there. This type of data is known as ordinal data. Previously, when actually I was a student, this type of situations, normal, nominal or ordinal data was not in the syllabus. Actually, you deal with only this ratio scale data. But over the advent of time, nowadays, many programs are there, many uh, tools came into the picture. That is through which we can discuss about the nominal and ordinal data also. Third one is the interval data. Suppose we consider the temperature between Agartala and Silom. Suppose we consider the temperature between Agartala and Silom. So when you talked about the temperature, definitely some measurement scale is there. So uh, which one is colder, Agartala or Sil Silom? Definitely we can order them. Secondly, what is the distance? That is, what is the temperature in Agartala or in Silom? That we can also discuss this one. But no unique origin. Why? No unique origin is there because suppose in Agartala temperature dropped from 29 degree to 25 degree. So there is a 4 degree drop. At the same time, uh, suppose 4 degree Fahrenheit, it is, there is a dropping of this one. And in Silong, suppose the same dropped from 12 to 8. So there is a 4 degree, 4 degree, a drop in Silong also. But the coldness, what you face in Silong is definitely much more what you face in, uh, what you face in uh, Agartala. So that's why they cannot be compared. So this type of data is known as interval data. And finally, the ratio scale data. Ordering is there. That is, you talked about the money value of any pen. It may, there is a distance as well as unique origin. When I was a student, normally our teachers taught only these portions. That is the ratio scale data where we can go for some analysis. But nowadays, what happens for every type of scale of measurement, uh, whatever, what type of data it may be, there is a, some tools are there and that you can analyze this one. And actually, what type of tools you will use this one that depends on this scale of measurement. Next one, suppose, so sources of data. So after that, another one, I'll go very quickly through this one so that we can analyze that is what tools should be used and want to use this one. So as the sources of data is concerned, primarily it is basically divided in two parts. One is primary data, another one is secondary data. We talked about the Kamal. So Kamal is 30 years old and has two children. I can You can directly collect through some survey in the nearby areas. In that case, when you data are collected from the field of inquiry, that is known as the primary data. Whereas when this data has already been collected by someone else, suppose this information is already available in the register of residence, uh, available at Dukli RD block. And from there, you collect this information. So this data has information has already been collected by someone else. And on the basis of that, you have uh, collected this one, then that is called the secondary data. You have not collected this one. After that, another concept, we quickly go this one through that one is known as the populations and sample. So let's take this one. So let's put this one for this one. Let's consider this one. Okay, 
here statistical populations is something different from the populations of any state or any village of any town like this one statistical populations is known as a set whose every element is characterized by k in our example suppose we want to know the what is the mean max of the pre university students say here we talked about only marks here we only talked about this marks so then marks is basically we are talking about the marks so here k is equal to 1 Suppose we want to talk about the marks plus suppose family income. So in that case, I have k is equal to two. That is, we are talking about the two characteristics. So unit under study is known as the populations, a set whose every element is characterized by k. So in that concept, if I consider k is equal to one, then populations is invariant. Whereas if we take k is equal to two, that is populations is bivariant. If we consider k is equal to more than two, then we more normally say this one as a multivariate. Actually, what type of technique you will use in your research that depends on your objectives and that objective may be univariate, that objective may be bivariate or that objective may be uh, multivariate also. Suppose we want to know the uh, Marx distribution pattern of uh, Tripura University. So what we are talking about, anyone please, it is univariate or bivariate, Marx distribution pattern of Tripura University. Uh, can anyone tell me what type of objective it is? It is univariate or multivariate? You can write it in the text box or that is uh, chat box also. We are talking about the Marx distributions pattern of Tripura University, students of Tripura University. It is a univariate objective or multivariate objective? Anyone? It is univariate or multivariate? Probably it is a univariate. It is a probably it is an invariant. Yes, it is an invariant objective. Okay. Now suppose I want to know the uh, Marx distributions pattern of. I want to compare and contrast between the Marx distributions pattern of arts and science faculties of Tripura University. Then it is invariant or my bivariate. Compare and contrast the. Compare and contrast the. Marx distributions pattern of science faculty and arts faculty. It is invariant. It is a bivariate. Sir. It is a bivariate. Okay. Now suppose I want to investigate the Marx distributions pattern of science faculty and arts faculty. It is invariant or bivariate. So question number one. My questions are very simple. First, uh, whole Tripura University. TU, Marx distributions pattern of this one. Next one, I want to compare, compare between uh, arts and science. So it is basically, you say that this is basically bivariate. And third, suppose I want to investigate the Marx distributions of arts and then science. So it is univariate or bivariate? Bivariate. Are you sure it is bivariate? It is a univariate, sir. Actually, yes. Actually, both are true. It is multiple univariate. Multiple univariate. Because here we are not comparing between arts and science. Here we want to investigate the Marx distributions pattern of arts faculty and science faculty. That is separately. So it is basically multiple univariate. Multiple univariate. Okay. So if you are if you are clear about your objective, then there is no problem. Then you can set your research tools accordingly. This notions of populations is not always the same as the notions of populations in ordinary conversation, what I tell you. And it is the reference set based on which statistical hypotheses are made. That is, uh, I want to suppose there is a uh, problem between the university authority and the students. They demand suppose higher, uh, suppose higher uh, fellowships. But uh, university decided that no, we will not increase that one because so far the conditions of the uh, economic conditions of the students are concerned, it is more or less good. Then they go for a survey and on the basis of that survey, they found that no, that is basically contradictory to the, like this one. So previously on the basis of this, when you compare it like this one, then this type of statistical hypothesis are made in the next class. Dr. Samad Goswami will discuss all these things. But before that, I want to... Uh, clear the period on the basis of that, that will be done. So here, most important thing is that suppose the university has 2000 students are there and we want to select uh, 
and suppose only 10 percent students so 10 percent of 2000 means only 200 students and on the basis of the 200 students we want to make some inference about the whole Tripura university's marks distributions pattern so we have two options options number one we can go for a complete analysis complete analysis means where every student will be contacted and on the basis of that average will be found that is known as the populations parameter that is parameter means that is the characteristics of the whole populations all the students of Tripura university alternatively we can consider a small fraction representative fractions and that should be random in nature that is when i select the sample i cannot choose someone that is who is my relative or who is my friend rather i randomly select any of the 200 students and when you select this one every student out of these 2000 has equal chance that that they will be incorporated into the samples so that should be random in nature nature in the next sections we'll consider this one random sampling so here there we have two options what I discussed just like this one, examine every element of populations known as census or complete analysis. That is all the 2000 students are individually contacted, but that involves cost as well as that involves some uh, time also. Alternatively, uh, some populations parameters inferred by studying only a part of the populations known as samples. That is, if you consider in terms of a Venn diagram, suppose you consider a Venn diagram like this one. Uh, so actually Venn diagram means suppose we consider a Venn diagram this one and suppose we consider a small fractions like this one so here we can say this one that is this is the this is the sample that is that represents a small fractions and this is the whole populations this is the whole populations we are considering a small fractions that basically the representations of the whole populations so this sample is not like this one, but the objective is concerned. Objective of this complete enumeration is to characterize the populations by studying each and every element of the uh, that populations. That is each and every students of Tripura University. Total n is equal to n means students two thousands. And suppose here we consider, oh sorry, here we consider, here we consider only uh, ten persons. So small n is equal to n at the rate suppose ten percent. So in that case, that should be only 2000 into 10 percent is equal to 200. So we study only 200 and on the basis of that, we decide that uh, that is uh, what would, what actually the actual poisons of Tripura University. There must might be some error and some error are basically uh, expected. So when you go for a sampling, there are two types of problem may arise. One is called type one error and another one is called type two error. And here I tell you one story, uh, perhaps uh, all of you must uh, watch this Mahabharat series. Is there anyone who have not uh, watched this Mahabharat? I don't know whether you read this one or not. Actually, you have uh, definitely watched this one on television. Is there anyone who have not? I tell you a beautiful story. The story of uh, uh, Dushmanta, that is father of Bharat. And nowadays there is a debate is also going on. Uh, that is whether one country's name should be changed to Bharat and I like, like this one. So I am telling about uh, the story of uh, his parents. Oh, just few days ago, one cinema was also released, na? Sakantalam. I think you have already watched that one. Is there anyone who has watched Sakantalam? Anyone? You have not watched Sakantalam? Hey, bhai, nowadays you are not watching cinema also. Anyway, so... <laughs> What happens? Uh, one day Dushmanto met uh, Shoguntala and somehow married her. Spent some time, suppose one month, two months, three months like this one, and then uh, go back to his residence at uh, I don't know the word where is the residence. Maybe what is the Hostinapur like this one? Maybe uh, anyway. So before he leave Shoguntala, he told that I might forget you. Uh, so whenever you want to come to town, please come and show me this ring and I'll accept you as my wife. I really don't know. If I go to my uh, flat and ask my wife, okay, you show me the ring, that is, that is you are my wife, probably I'll be thrown out from that flat. But at that time, I don't know what was the reason. Anyway, but Sokuntala did not take care of that ring. He, she was totally elected. I have married 
दुश्मन तो ही इज माई हजबेंड सो वन डे आफ्टर द बर्थ ऑफ भरत दैट इज भरत भरत सो ही डिसाइडेड टू गो टू द कैपिटल एंड टू मीट हिज हर हजबेंड सो इन द मीन टाइम सी लॉस द रिंग so when she approached dushmanto that is i am your your wife and dushmanto forget everything and when she forget everything so what the claim made by sakuntala is that i am your wife actually that was true but uh, so dushmanto fails to accept that one so this is called type 1 error there is something is true you are not able to accept that one this is called type 1 error and once this type 1 error is there automatically the type 2 error will also be there what is that so some people said there who are moving around dushmanto they told dushmanto that sir don't accept this lady she is may not be a good character suddenly coming and depend and demanding that she is your wife don't allow her so here what happens since type 1 error was there previously what she was uh, what she was claiming what she was claiming actually she was right and dushman to fail to accept that one so that was type 1 error and since there is a type 1 error committed automatically what happens type 2 error is also there they are claiming something that is regarding the character of sakuntala that is not actually true but dushman to accepted that and see and uh, dushman to uh, Order the guard. Okay, just uh, throw this lady out of my uh, kingdom. So this is basically type two error. Sampling is also like like this one. If you are not able to take the samples properly, then there might be some type one error, and this is called alpha. And in statistics, it is expected that some sort of error must be there. Normally, one uh, percent, five percent, or ten percent error are there. If one percent error are there, then ninety nine percent confidence is there. If five percent error are there, statistically ninety five percent confidence, and if ten percent errors are there, then ninety percent confidence levels are there. Accordingly, when we choose the samples, we have to accept that there might be some type one error might be there. So accordingly, we have to choose this one. So here, when we talked about the populations and sample, populations is set of all elements being considered. That is all the students of Tripura University. and sample means set of items chosen for the study so how to choose samples that is another questions and whatever be the characteristics of populations that is known as parameter and whatever be the characteristics of sample that is known as statistic not the statistics and here we need another important things that is called sampling frame what is sampling frame when you talked about that that tripura university has 2000 students there must be some registers or there must be some places where the records of all these 2000 students must be there that is called sampling frame and on the basis of that sampling frame we basically collect the samples next we come to the types of sampling what we are discussing about this one there are two types of mainly sampling one is random sampling and another one is non random sampling sampling means random sampling means where every unit of the population has equal chance of incorporating into the samples consider a class of 50 students and suppose in the department of it and cs and suppose uh, your faculty uh, faculty members they decided to choose a committee of only uh, five students uh, who will represent this class so if any five students are chosen that is each and every students of this class of 50 students they have equal chance of incorporating into the committee then that is known as the probability sampling if the faculty choose the five students on the basis of some criteria or their preference like this one so everyone does not have equal chance of incorporating into the samples and that is called non probability sampling normally during our research sometimes we go for non probability sampling and we expect that result will be equivalent to probability sampling and that is the major problem so we must take care of this one so here some sampling methods are there if it is a probability sampling it may be with replacement or without replacement with replacement means suppose from a class of 50 student randomly i choose any one students and again i ask him or her to go to the class class and again choose another one that same persons may be chosen more than 
uh, once also. So that is called with replacement. And sometimes if I choose anyone from this class of 50 students, so one student is chosen, said so again, I have to choose another one from out of 49. So their probability of selection is 1 by 49. So some other types are there, systematic, stratified. We will not discuss right now. Those who are interested, they can directly go there. Next important question is that here I talked about all these things. And uh, in front of Tripura University, in front of Tripura University, you'll find that uh, one statue is there of Rabindranath Tagore. I think you have uh, seen that one now. Those who are from Tripura University, have you noticed? One statue yes, sir. is there. Yes, sir. Na? Rabindranath Tagore. Yes, sir. I don't know whether Rabindranath Tagore ever studied statistics or not, but uh, one quote by Rabindranath Tagore is very famous and very popular in statistics circles. That is that instead of giving long lecture on the math sticks, it would be better to enlighten math sticks. So here, till near about 30 minutes, I make you totally bored. And what is sampling like this one? Let's uh, discuss something that is how to choose the samples. Okay. So I go for a simple file and suppose let's delete everything. Otherwise, what happens? You may say that, okay, sir, you have already calculated this one. Here, is it visible the Excel sheet? Let me make it a little bit larger. So here I took the students, their ID and their marks, suppose, randomly, randomly selected marks. I can change the marks also if you want. Let's uh, delete this marks and take some random marks out of 100. So only the students number one, two, three, four, like this one, these are the there. And suppose these are their ID, that is we have taken 200 students instead of 2000. And suppose I want to choose 10 percent of 200. So what is 10 percent of 200? What is the amount? 10 percent of 200? I am weak in mathematics. Please tell me by. Okay. Someone has given this. 20. 20, na? Probably 20. Yes, sir, 20. 20 exactly. 20, 20. Okay. But before that, randomly select some marks. So randomly select. Uh, rand between. Someone may score 0 and someone may score, suppose, 100 also. Okay, so I randomly generate this one. Oh, so these are the random marks generated. I copy it. Again, paste special and values. Uh, so, okay, okay, everything. So, these are the random marks generated. We have generated random marks in front of you. So, we have 200 students are there. I want to select them. So, what is the way? Very simple. In your access, those who are in computer, they can see that data part there is a data analysis part is there is there anyone who is in computer in front of computer anyone who is in front of computer all or all in front of mobile if anyone in front of computer please check whether this data and data analysis part is available in your excel sheet or not i'll tell you one small trick anyone in front of computer those who are in front of computer, kindly check this one, whether data in the data part, their data analysis part is there or not. Have you checked anyone? Okay, it is visible, na? Rishika Barua, visible. Data, data analysis. Hello? Rishika Barua, is it visible? Okay, so for her data analysis part is visible. Very good. So let's go to data, data analysis, and on the basis of that, choose sampling from here. This sampling wizard. Then let's select this ID, all the 200. That is, I select this one, label is there. That is, since the first line is ID is written and that is not numerical in nature, I want to select any 20. Okay, I want to choose any 20 samples. 10 percent of this one, 200 is 20. And suppose I need the output here, sample students. And I click it. Automatically, these are the IDs. These are selected automatically. It's first 4, first 177. If I click this one, now, no formulas are there. Now, you have to identify the corresponding marks here. So let's write this one here. Uh, insert what says. So these are the sample students. I have to locate the points. So roll number four, that should be 43. 
But if I go in this manner for 200 students, that would be a laborious job. So one simple trick is that let's write is equal to VLOOKUP. What do you want to look up? I want to look up this marks 4. That is, oh, sorry, students ID 4. From where? You just select all these tables and press one F4. Let's fix the array. Then from which index corresponding to 4, I want to from this so was the table I have selected in green color. I want to the second column from this second column. And then true means approximate match and false means false means exact match. So that roll number four corresponding to that 43 games. Roll number four automatically 43 games. So if I select this one, automatically remaining are selected. So let's check for 69, it should be 85. Let's say 69. Yes, exactly 85. Check. For 10794. 107, 107, 107, 94. So we can expect that all are true. Any problem? Any problem, anyone? So this is the way the, that you need to sample all these things. Now from Tripura University, whom to survey and whom not to survey, randomly, how you can do this one? Step one, you can do one thing that you collect the roll numbers of all the student of Tripura University, put it here, put it here, and then generate one ID from one to two thousands. And then you will get the marks from there also. That is, you will not get marks. This marks portions will not be there. You just sample this one and look at these are the students whom you want to contact. What I tell you in this classroom, that is very tough. That is to contact all these students. So if you need 200, uh, so samples for 250 students now go to that corresponding department as per your enrollment number if you decode this one you can find their department also and on the basis of that you can contact that particular students and you fill up all these things that is sample marks will be available to you so these are the marks so these are the marks then once we get these marks what do you get this one first of all can you anyone tell me so far as the marks is concerned it is a qualitative data or quantitative data it is qualitative or quantitative marks? Quantitative. Quantity. It is interval data or ratio scale data? Interval or ratio? It is interval. It is a basically ratio scale data because those who score one or those who score hundred. And so definitely some definite skills are there. Scale starts from zero, ends at 100. So ordering is there, distance is there, and unique origin is also there. That's why it's a ratio scale data. So if it is a ratio scale data, then we can use something. Now, depending on this one, uh, let's choose that is what would be the, we again come back to this one. So this is the way we have collected the samples. How to do this one? Level of measurement and what measures we should use this one. So, as the central tendency is concerned, here we talked about the mean, median, and mode. Mean values means basically average. Mode means the any values with highest frequencies. And median means the middlemost value after arranging them in either ascending or descending order. Apart from that, so let's uh, discuss one thing this one. Uh, so, let's, that is how to characterize the data. That is most important one. Because whom to choose and whom not to choose, that is very important. Suppose we draw this line like this one. So here, what is that? This point is, suppose uh, this point is, suppose this point, we start from here. So this is the point of our minimum point, minimum. Minimum point and suppose this is the maximum point. So in our case, it is 0 is the minimum and maximum is 100. So if I find the middlemost value, 50th percent, 50th percent that basically divided 50 percent data here, 50 percent data here, we call this one as median data. If we divide this one such a that, such a manner that after arranging, suppose 25th percentile data, it is called quartile 1. And here we have quartile 3, that is third 75th percentile data. 
Apart from that, we have interquartile range, quartile range, IQR. It is called IQR, interquartile range. And the formula is very simple. IQR is basically Q3 minus Q1. Once you find this Q3 plus Q1, you calculate Q3 plus 1.5 into IQR. IQR. And also cons consider Q3 in plus 3 into IQR. And definitely that should be here. Suppose for the sake of simplicity, assume that, uh, assume that, okay, suppose it is here and it is here for the sake of simplicity. So here, what we get this one is that, suppose this portion is that is, and this portion is that is. By similar logic, calculate, uh, similar logic, calculate from here, Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, and also calculate Q1 minus 3 into IQR, IQR. So, and for the sake of simplicity, so let's take green. Suppose it is here. And suppose it is here. So what we get, uh, we get this one as uh, suppose. Uh, let's locate this one. Suppose this is that point, and suppose this is basically that point. So what happens? So far as this characteristic is concerned, hundred is outside this one. Hundred is basically outside this one. This portion is called extreme upper outlier. Upper outlier outlier this process is called this part is called mild upper outlier this process is called after this and these two portions that is after this one here you find that this is in this portions here is called mild upper outlier and this portion is called extreme uh, sorry lower extreme lower outlet lower lower outlet and extreme lower outlet so as this data is concerned from 0 to 100 here 100 is towards the right of q3 plus iqr so you cannot consider these portions you have to consider the whole data in our example from here to here only these portions and this is known as the box whisker plot box whisker plot that is very important to identify this one. Is there any outlier in your data or not? Suppose we want to know the um, average income of Agartala. So if average income at Agartala, if you want to calculate this one and suddenly suppose uh, Mr. Adani become the uh, name appeared in the voter list of Ramnagar and that one name is sufficient so that the average of this whole Tipura will increase in multifold. So actually, that is basically upper outlier. We cannot consider them. By, sim by similar logic, if I consider, suppose, Sujamani Nagar area, here more or less all the peoples are concerned, they have a more or less average is there. Suddenly, suppose, name of uh, Mr. Mukesh Sammani appeared in the voter list of Sujamani Nagar area. Then also same thing arises. So that's why what we need to do this one now. That is, we have to first characterize the data. That is, whether to take this one or not. Now, again, we come back to this portions. That is, if it is a nominal data, that is, suppose you talked about the today's participants. What is the average colors uh, of today's participants? Another I call, I, another thing I ask you. That is, last uh, day before yesterday, I think, na? World Cup final was there or two days before? World Cup final? So in the gallery, uh, what is the average color? In the gallery, what was the average color of the shirts? T-shirt? Blue. Blue, are you sure? Yes, you know, sir. No, no, because what happens now? That average color is not that. Maximum color was blue. But average color, you cannot find this one because that is a nominal type of data. Answer is either blue or not blue, either green or not green like this one. So that is basically a nominal data. You cannot find that is what is the average color. You can only find that what was the maximum number of t-shirts with which color. So for nominal data, my point is that if it is a nominal data, if it is a nominal data, then only mode will be considered here for nominal data. That is whether you came from rural data, rural 
area or from urban area, then you have to only consider the mode only. So in research, you need not ask anyone. Always ask that is what type of data you are talking about. Here you are talking about the here you are talking about the uh, nominal data. So you have to talk about only mode. Next one is the ordinal data. Suppose suppose the preference is considered. Preference is concerned. That is those who are the supporters. So if I want to find the average number of supporters, not possible. But I can find the maximum number of supporters and I can divide all the uh, all the numbers that is whom you prefer most, India or Australia. In that case, the median value definitely because more than 95% people were uh, Indian supporter. So you can find the median value to here. And if I want to find the spread or variance, here we can use the quartile, interquartile range up to 75 percentile values and up to 25th percentile values. That is for right hand side. If it is an interval scale data or ratio scale data, so in order to measure the central tendency, you can use IQR, range means maximum and minimum, and variance and standard deviations also. So again, we again we go back to our initial example. So where we have this data already, we have this data. We have collect this sample marks. So what we need to calculate? We need to calculate minimum, minimum values, then maximum, then range. These are the way. Then quartile one, quartile one, then quartile uh, three, then IQR, IQR, then uh, the uh, the median median values and let us calculate this one and let's draw the uh, that box whisker plot first of all minimum is equal to mean then i select uh, this one minimum was i think one yes then i find the max uh, max max is basically maximum of the sample value is basically only 100 so range is maximum minus minimum so range is uh, 99 then quartile one i write quartile uh, quart quartile then for this quartile i consider this one first quartile and the value is 20.25 for third quartile quartile <coughs> quartile third quartile is See, third quartile. So what is interquartile range? It is basically quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So that is the value. And next we find the median. 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 Median of this one. That is second quartile. And that comes out to be like this one, 48. Now, what we have discussed, we have to consider something. That is Q1 minus 1.5 into iqr and then i need to find uh, q1 minus 3 into iqr let's find these two values so what do you find quartile one is equal to this one uh, q1 minus 1.5 into iqr so it is like this one next Q1 minus 3 into uh, IQI. And here you check one thing. So, as this one is the concern, whatever value we have found that is equal to, I want to check, is equal to this less than minimum. If it is true, if it is true, then there exists no, if it is true, then there is no lower outlier. True. I ask the same questions. Is it less than? Actually, first question is true. The second question is also true. Yes, that is also true. So there is no lower outlier. And I'll draw this one. By similar logic, you find Q3 plus 1.5 into IQR as well as uh, Q3, Q3 plus 3 into IQR. Then the formula corresponding value it gives me is equal to Q3 uh, plus 1.5 into IQR means uh, this one. 
ask these questions <laughs> that is maximum oh sorry is equal to maximum maximum value it is greater than maximum yes if it is true no lower or upper outlier and similar questions will be also be there so it is let's calculate when i doing this one for some times of data it may appear plus three into i keyword it is like this one and same answer will be there is equal to is it greater than maximum definitely same answer will be there so no upper outlier so on the basis of that one let's draw this one let's draw this one that is what type of value we are getting here here we get in our example we get and uh, suppose we take this one as a green uh, this purple color so here we get minimum value is basically one and maximum is 100 but we have to draw this something differently we have to draw it something differently so suppose this is the line then uh, it appeared as It is minimum, it is maximum, it is Q1, it is Q3, it is Q2. And now let's write this one. It is minimum is equal to 0, Q1 is equal to, okay, let's copy it. Let's copy it and paste it here. So let's copy it. Now let's write this one. Minimum is equal to zero, and here uh, maximum is equal to suppose maximum is equal to hundred. It is Q1. Q1 is equal to uh, Q1 is equal to twenty point two five. Q3 is equal to seventy three point two five. Yeah, seventy three point five. 73.5 and Q to median is equal to 48. Okay. Now, so far as this one is concerned, uh, this portion here we have uh, this one. This portion is concerned Q1 minus this one. So that portion is here basically minus 59. And minimum is more than this one. And so as the maximum Q3 plus 1.5 is 153.375. That means all the data are basically compatible for analysis. We need not worry about this one. These are compatible for analysis. So what we have discussed this one up to this point, we have considered a small sampling methods. On the basis of that, we collect the samples. Then we find the corresponding value and try to find that whether that is true or not. That is whether is there any outlier is there or not. That we have discussed this one. Here, any problem up to this point? Anyone? So can I proceed? Okay, so level of measurement when you choose this one now nah, that depends on mainly six factors that is what type of statistical tools will be chosen. How many variables are there? One, two or more than two. If it is one univariate, two bivariate. If it is more than two multivariate. Level of measurement numerical or categorical. If it is numerical then one sort of techniques will be there. If it is categorical that is either ordinal or nominal that is uh, what is the color of the t-shirt like this one that is categorical that type of analysis may be there next the distributions of the variable that is it may be parametric or non-parametric when it has some specific distributions are there statistical distributions then that is called parametric data otherwise it is non-parametric data nature of hypothesis that will be discussed in the next class it may be association or difference between this one that is is there any association between marks obtained by any students and the family income then that is a case of association and hypothesis of differences that is what is the mean marks of the students of arts faculty and the science faculty then that is the hypothesis of differences dependence and independent structure whether they are dependent or paired like what suppose previously someone has uh, chosen uh, mtech in itn cs later he decided to shift in some uh, other subjects suppose in mathematics 
so if, in that case you can observe the students in two different point of times and you can go for a paired structure and finally sample size if it is less than equals to 29 then it is called small sample if it is more than that one that is called large samples more than 29 that is 30 or more that is called large samples and accordingly so let's write this one so that this is please keep it up with you whenever you need any uh, that is what to use when to use then you can use this one this structure i have collected somewhere else when i was a student and just prepared this one I think that will be helpful for you. That is when to use. Oh, sorry, univariate. We have discussed now. Univariate. Univariate. Oh, sorry. This one. This one. First univariate. First univariate. That is suppose when you discuss about only one samples, then what type of technique you should use this one? So let's discuss this one. So suppose if you follow descriptive statistics, if it is a nominal data, then only use mode and it is not considered the spread or variances. If it is the ordinal, mode and median, we have just discussed. Otherwise, you can use interquartile range. If it is an interval, then mean, median or mode, that is you can use these two for these two types of data. Otherwise, IQR, range, variance, standard deviations, you can use this one. Here inference, that is when you want to find the Hypothesis of difference that should be a one sample t test. In just in the next next class, and Dr. Samar Goswami, Samar Goswami will discuss about this one. So for a univariate data, this is the simple structure. I mean, you can go for the descriptives or you can go for a inference. Next one is that is for bivariate data. You always remember this one. Then you need not ask anyone. That is what type of technique I should use for my study like this one. It is easily available. You just remember this one. Bivariate data means suppose we want to compare and contrast between the marks test students pattern of science and arts. So here two things may be there. One is hypothesis of difference, and this hypothesis of association. So here, uh, what we do? Suppose data may be parametric data or data may be non-parametric data. If it is a parametric data, samples may be independent or paired. So here is independent sample t test. And here you use paired sample t test. In the next class, that will be discussed. If it is a non parametric type of data, suppose we want to know the what is the pattern of <coughs> pattern of arrival of customer in terms of a gender in a big bazaar and bazaar Kolkata, that is in Reliance Smart and Bajar Kolkata, then no such distributions are there. You can use the man Whitney data. If it is a parametric data, hypothesis of association, if it is a parametric, some specific distributions are there. You can correlate, find the correlations. If it is a causation case, you can go for a regressions. I think some other faculty members, maybe Dr. Moniz Das or there, they may talk about this one. Suppose it is a non parametric data, that is, it may be nominal data. That is, here you need to just know the mode values, then use the sky square. If it is ordinal, some ranking is possible. That is, these are the ranking by faculty one, these are the ranking by faculty two, if you want to compare between these two. If your performance in a particular sports like this one, use Spearman's rank correlations data. And finally, if it is a multivariate data, multivariate, multivariate data, then this type of situation will be there. It may be parametric, then you can compare the ANOVA. What is the ANOVA? Suppose uh, you find the performance of different students. Uh, suppose you want to uh, compare the performance of the different batsmen uh, of origin, India origin, Australia origin, and suppose New Zealand origin like that. That is more than two groups are there. Then multiple t tests known as the ANOVA you can use this one. If it is a non parametric data, suppose you want to know the yield, yield available in agricultural field, you can use the Puskal Wallis data. If it is a type of dependent variables, it depends on this one. DP means dependent variables. It may be numerical, it may be categorical. If it is numerical, then you can use multiple regressions. And if it is a categorical, for numerical analysis, you can use multiple discriminant analysis. Otherwise, logistic regressions. Okay, logistic regressions.
Hello, sir. Some, someone has raised your uh, hand. Do you have any questions, sir? Anyone? Sir? Someone has raised your hand. Do you have any questions? It's somehow it mistakenly done. Okay. So these are the way that we can consider this one. So these are the statistical tools you have to use in your research. Any questions up to this point? Anyone, any questions up to this point? So I promise you that if time permits, then I'll show you another one. Have you heard about the visual abstracts? Anyone? Yes, visual sir. Visual abstract. Whether you have to submit the visual abstracts in your paper? Sometimes. So some of the journal, some, some of the journals demand it, sir. Some of the journals demand this one. Okay. Uh, let's try to do this one. It is already available. You can go through this one. Uh, so let's uh, <laughs> do this one. Okay. So I think you are habituated with R programming. Some of you. Hello, sir. Are you habituated? Little bit, sir. We have used it. Okay, okay, okay. Very good, very good. And other sir, students, they know better than me. I am not a person of programming now, but I am just trying. Okay. And this is already available. Visual abstracts. So let's open one R. This is the R console. Then go file, change directory. We need some library. So three library I have chosen. How they came, please don't ask me any questions. Nah. You know better than me. First, create a blank canvas. Blank canvas means this one. Let's see. This is the blank canvas. Create this one. And being a person of non-computer, I just know how to arrange this one now data data frame like this one one to ten i have do this one how it comes don't ask me <laughs> i really don't know so panel another panel so we're creating this one let's go for it we divide this what i need to do this one once i do this one in column three or you can go for a three rows also what do you prefer most sometimes it requires uh, row wise sometimes it requires column wise also so here you need to put some uh, text also. So annotate text here. So here you instead of this one, you can write this one. And that will appear as after annotating findings one, statistics one, unit one, level. So here you have to change this one, finding one or your objective one, whatever you prefer most. Here I write this one, statistics one, unit one, like this one. Instead of this one, in your abstract, you can write this one as objective one. I can write this one as objective one. Objective one. Okay. Then objective one labels is that suppose I need the, uh, I use the method of TSP, traveling salesman problem. Okay. And suppose labels is unit one instead of this one. I use the tourism, applications of tourism, application of tourism applications in tourism sorry in tourism let's see whether it works or not again do this one in canvas so panel one i let's write this yes it works beautifully it works objective one of my paper is i am applying tsp methodology so here i use method method is tsp applications so i write this one as applications means in tourism objective so let's write <coughs> analysis of tourist spot tourist spot in tripura spot in tripura oh sorry 
let's write this one let's check this one whether it works or not Are analysis of true spot but other portions are not coming now so what is happening level text text is 5.5 let's make it 3.5 again learn this one Oh no, font is there. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Size, uh, size is uh, let's make it 10. And it is 3.5, 5.5. So let's start this one. Oh, it is working. Objective analysis of twist spot in Tipura method TSP applications tourism. So I can do it now. Any problem? Anyone? And in the same manner, you can do it for three different. If you use R Studio, then there will be no problem. Otherwise, there is a problem. I am using R Console. Actually, I don't know how to do this one. So finding, you just replace this one. And finally, once you just put some of this parameter, finally, that will directly come as Finding one, finding two, finding three. You can write one objective one, objective two, objective three. You choose your emoji accordingly and you will get the results. Okay, bye. Any problem? Bye. Anyone? Any problem? Bye. So, this is the way how we can prepare our abstracts. And these are available in internet also. You just try this one. You can easily put this one. In one of my paper, previously they asked me for this visual abstracts like this one. Now, I never heard about this one. I'm a man who is know nothing about computer. Right? They asked me. Then some of my friends from your department and those who are, were associated with your department in other universities, in your university, ultimately, <laughs> I get this idea. That is how to do this one. But previously, I really don't know. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. I'm extremely sorry that actually our one of our seminar is going on in my department. And that's why I just able to so in the near future, if I got the opportunity, definitely I try a level base. Give you some more. Thank you, all of Thank you, Shubhi sir, for uh, being so informative in the session. I hope uh, our participant has got something from your uh, content. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Wei. Thank you. Thank you very much for providing me the opportunity to be part of, of with your department. Just like previous six years, na? It is seven years, six years is going on. Previous yeah. five years. Sixth year. Six, this is sixth year. I'm really grateful that for the last six years, you yeah. give me the opportunity to work with you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll share the slides and other things with all of you, na? With, with all of you, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, bye. Thank you. So, can I leave, bye? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, participants, uh, let's take a uh, five minute gap. We are waiting for the next speaker to join. So, we'll start soon. Thank you.